So I play slow pitch softball, and I've noticed there's really not a ton of content out there to watch. I'm trying to fix that this year. Today, specifically, we're going to be taking four videos, smashing them into one video. Basically, I'm going to be making the best slow pitch video on YouTube. Our goal for today is to cover all slow pitch gear, and I'm going to be giving tips on everything. But the most important thing is the age-old question, does size matter? Throughout the video, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different equipment, bats, batting gloves, but I definitely care about gloves the most. So I'll be linking and recommending different gloves, but one of the series of gloves is wild. They're trying to just get rid of them. It's a closeout sale and the prices are like 60 to 70% off. Crazy good deal. Just so we're on the same page, here's the outline for today. Step one. Oh, I don't know what the steps are. Step one, what's in my baseball bag? Don't worry, I took out the heroin and empty water bottles. Again, I don't know what step two is. Step two, talk about hitting and which bats are good at hitting. Step three, what gloves should you be using at each position? Step four, the massive problem with the slow pitch mark. It seriously is, it's a huge deal. We have to talk about it. All right, let's actually open up the bag and take a look. We have a couple bats, I'll mention those in a second. This is typically what it looks like. We have something like eight to 10 maybe gloves in my bag at all times for myself and then obviously my teammates. I can only wear one at a time. Right now we don't really care about those. What we do care about, cleats. Don't skip, let me just explain what cleats I use and why. I've learned rubber cleats are just the best, but the rounded edge rubber cleats are so much easier to use than those like sharp edge ones that have like hard corners. I can kind of drag my feet like I naturally do sometimes and I don't trip and fall over, but they still have traction that can run around. These were a game changer. Mizuno sent them over and I am beating them up. I should probably get new ones this year. Batting gloves are huge. We recently did a batting glove review. It was a lot of fun and what we learned was these Franklins are just ridiculously nice, okay? Absolutely love everything about these. These ones specifically are long cuff, but obviously Franklin has both. Obsessed with these, they feel absolutely amazing. Those are like a standard thickness. If you want something really thick and really durable, Major Atwood, okay? These are a far cheaper option for thick, durable batting gloves. Bruce Bolts are just super expensive. You don't have to get those, but it's just something to consider. And then just by the noise, Kraken. You know we're using Kraken. So last year was the first time I've ever experimented with actually using pine tar. Anyway, you guys, now I'm a pine tar guy. And the main reason I like Kraken is actually because it's clear. So it's not as gunky and it doesn't like get on your gloves and whatnot. None of this is sponsored. I'm just telling you what I like. The most important thing to a lot of you guys is gonna be the bats. Let me just give it to you straight. The Louisville Slugger Genesis is currently like the best bat in slow pitch, okay? If you want like really specific stuff on slow pitch bats, check out the slow pitch bat bros. They have a list. They're the most helpful for that category, but don't sleep on this Axe Avenge Pro. There's going to be a review on YouTube of this that maybe I'm a part of, wink wink, in the very near future. I really enjoyed using it in the review, but now it's actually my gamer at home, so it's a hot bat. With that being said, we should probably take some swings. How is that a home run? Nothing crazy here, we're gonna take some swings with Genesis. This is actually the first time I've gotten to do this because it's just been winter in Chicago, so. That's thrilling. That's pathetic. This is a bad swing. How is that a home run? Genesis. No, replay that swing, that was a bad swing. That's just soft. I'm not very satisfied with my swing right now. That feels terrible. Prove the Genesis wrong. That's what I do in game. One hop the fence on like a soft liner. That felt decent. So right now they're tied for home runs. One home run each. Dude, pathetic, absolutely pathetic. The Genesis has more pop. Like none of my swings were good there. First time out here this year. Genesis, it was a genuinely bad swing. And I, it just somehow went over the fence. Uh, the, the one home run I hit with the ax, I felt like I got a hold of it and it still kind of just barely went out. So 
Not a great round, but we learned. We learned. We are about to cover what glove size you should wear at each position. We're gonna put like a chart up. Feel free to yell at me in the comments. This is my opinion. And it's a good opinion. It's the right opinion. And it's the right opinion, so don't share your opinion. <laughs> to really start it off, let's talk to second base and shortstop. Stick to 12 and a quarter, 12 and a half, and 12.75. For third, I would say 12 and a half, 12.75, 13 inches. For everybody in the outfield, I would say 12.75 and up. The highest I would ever go is only 13 and a half inches. Anything above that is just too big. If you play first base, I wouldn't go out of your way to get a first base mitt for slow pitch unless you like really want it and you're dedicated. A ton of you guys out there should just be able to use an outfield glove. You'll be perfectly fine. Catchers, you can just use whatever you want. I also forgot to mention pitchers, so it, I would stick to infield size gloves. You know, something that you can move quickly because you get crazy comebackers. This is gonna be two tips for beginner softball players. When you're breaking your glove in, try to flare the pinky and flare the thumb. So it's shaped like that. You want balls to be going into the glove. If you curl it like this, the balls will stop going in the glove. The second massive tip, wear your glove with two fingers in the pinky. It takes some getting used to, but I promise, especially for like new guys, it will help a lot because it'll give you a deeper, deeper pocket. The first thing you need to do in any play is catch the ball and that helps a lot. I'm a bad YouTuber and I forgot something. If you play infield and outfield, 12.75. Get a 12.75, like the Wilson 1799. Outfield, infield, catcher, pitcher, doesn't matter, even first base. It's the most like universal glove, so 12.75 if you play like any random position. Do it. I do believe this will be kind of heated. I think people will be in the comments kind of arguing. Size, 15 inches, 11 and a half inches. This is just like a stock baseball glove, but look at here, dead. It can swallow a softball, okay? So that's kind of the thing. I remember when I made this video, people asked, can it swallow a softball, can I use it for softball? Yeah, it can. That doesn't mean you should use it for softball. That's what we're gonna kind of play around with. This is an 11 and a half inch Wilson. It's a 1716, all right? I'm wearing a two in the pinky. It is definitely deep. Like it's fun and it feels great because most infielders will understand the feeling of it's fun to play with a small glove. All right, I want one backhand. Feels buttery smooth, but I just don't think it's realistic to use something this small. You can do it. You'll make plays. You'll make diving plays. If you have more length, you're gonna make more plays. Cleaner plays. A softball here, ready? One more. A softball is so big, you will never lose it in your glove. So that's one of those things. You're not gonna lose it in this thing. All right, 15 inches, let's go. Just a little comparison. Let's do it. 15 inches at shortstop. Dude, so I went like for a rollover and it felt like the glove took like 15 minutes to go from here to here. I thought it was gonna hit the back of the glove. Why'd I try to do that? I don't know. It just feels so dumb. Could I glove flip? I think so. Oh, guess not. One more, one more. This is actively making me worse at softball. Now, that right there is like what this is made for. Let's take a few fly balls. What? I underestimated his power. Look at that, I'm lazy and I still caught it. Cause I got 15 inches. Oh, come on, that was the play we needed. This thing feels so big to lug around. I am gonna tell you right now, just don't buy a 15 inch glove. 
unless you are huge. You have to be huge. I'm like 5'11", friggin' 170, and dude, this is not working. I can catch them, but my forearm can literally feel how big and heavy this glove is. I'm also very out of breath. One more short one. What a play. Yes, you have more reach, it's undeniable. But the amount of effort it takes to move this glove around is too much. I don't think it's benefiting you unless, like I said, you're a massive human being. 13 and a half is the biggest I would go. 14 if you really want to have something huge. Nothing bigger than that. I'm about to give you guys three gloves that you should buy if you have no money cap. Okay, like you don't care how much you have to spend. First one, this Emery Cordura. It's super light, it's 1275. The blonde leather makes it so it's slightly on that like loose side, okay? High quality leather, but slightly loose. Just look at that. For twosies, the Wilson 1799. Probably my first pick if somebody's like, hey, I'm kind of new, I want to spend a bunch of money on a glove, Wilson 1799. Get it, you'll love it. My last pick is a Wilson 8000, specifically made for softball. Here's why I'm picking this. One, it was made for softball, so they had that in mind. Slow pitch softball to be specific. And two, it's ridiculously durable, okay? I've seen a friend with one. It's built like a tank. It'll last you a long time. The next ones are on the ground. I promise this isn't edited in. That right there is a Mizuno franchise. 75 bucks, so worth it if you need a cheap, cheap glove. Let's say, hey, I got a few more bucks in my bag. This is what you need to get. Mizuno MVP Prime. It's like 120 bucks, please. It's a fantastic option. The thing is, Mizuno makes really good like budget gloves that are actually somewhat durable. So, get those. Check the description, by the way, you guys, because there's links to all of this. I'm gonna organize it so it's easy to follow. And then the last one, the one you've been waiting for. This is the Easton Professional Series. Okay, do you like it so far? Love it. it seriously, it, this isn't a brand deal, this isn't nothing. This glove is normally like somewhere between 250 and 300. It, that was purchased for $70, okay? They raised the price, that sucks, but it raised up to I think like $90. So, ridiculously crazy good prices on the Eaton Professional Collection. I'm trying to tell the world because it's probably the best bang for your buck right now, but the thing is once they sell out, they're gone forever. This sounds like a brand deal, but it's not. I'm just trying to help you guys. So, I'll put that in the description as well to the whole collection so you can just like browse it and be like, oh, I like that one. It's up to you. The slow pitch market is absolutely scamming us because it's their job. I've tried saying this a bunch of times and I keep rambling because I'm trying not to sound like I'm calling everybody out there dumb. In the slow pitch world, we are biting the bait way too easily. Companies will say whatever they have to to get you to buy their product, whether it's good or bad. They'll say that there's some new barrel technology, new end cap, matte finish. We just fall for it every time. The best thing you can do is find a YouTuber that you trust wait for them to review a product and then go buy it. It's a really weird thing that we're doing, but we're pulling the trigger super quickly on new products in the slow pitch world. Companies aren't jerks, but they are just trying to sell their product, whether it's good, whether it's bad. That's what I'm trying to say. If you're confused about these really cheap Easton's, I understand, but we made a video about it. So watch the video. We talk about why these are super cheap and why they shouldn't be super cheap, but they still are. All right, worth watching. Thank you guys.